and welcome back to Dimensional Soul Healing with your host, Grace and Khan. All right, y'all, before we get into this episode today, I just want to go over a few announcements. So, my Enlighten Your Minds program is going on sale for the holidays, and it will be marked as $111 instead of it being originally priced at $300. If you are brand new to the awakening, or maybe you're even a veteran and you're just looking for new ways to heal yourself, expand your consciousness, and really take it to the next level, definitely go check out that course. It is like, I think, 35 steps. It is my biggest program that I have on my website at the moment. So definitely take advantage of this if you're curious or interested. Um, This holiday sale will only be running for the entire month of December. So once January 1st hits, it will go back to its original pricing of $300. So definitely hop on that um, while you can and take advantage of that discount because that program is going to take you to like next levels of consciousness and understanding. And that is going to be what we're headed on on today's subject. We are going to be taking many different things to the next levels of consciousness. So yes, if you are a person who gets triggered constantly and you're just like, oh my gosh, like I literally have no idea where to begin, that course is for you. Okay. And you can find that directly on my website at www.zenwithgrayson.com as well as my link tree through my Instagram at graysoncon. Um, I will post all of the links down below in the show notes. That way it's very easy to navigate. Um, And if you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm so excited and so glad you're here. This is going to be an awesome episode. I'm really excited. Okay, a couple more things. I have the sexual trauma healing course. So if you are somebody who has dealt with sexual abuse and childhood especially, and or maybe you are a person who had that memory blocked over 20 years ago and you have no idea that you went through that and that a certain neural pathway is just waiting to be unblocked and so that you can finally process and heal from that trauma, definitely check out that course. It is, I'm telling you guys, I designed it to be very nitty gritty and clear a lot of karmic contracts around your energy and really take your sex life and your relationship to yourself to the next level. So that course is $88 and can also be found directly on my website as well. And as for the financial wound healing course, okay, you guys, I literally had, I think, several downloads. I wrote it out. I wrote it on a sticky note on my desk. Yeah. So I had like not even several, like not even just a couple, but like multiple downloads surrounding finances and financial energy, consciousness around money and uh, certain quantum code healing around financial healing. So I'm just going to say this. I know that there's a lot of you who have been very antsy to take this course. And y'all, I'm just going to say I'm so sorry, but I'm, I'm going to have to postpone it until the end of December. I originally wanted to publish it December 1st. I've like gone back and forth with the date so many times. So I'm so sorry. But um, yeah, I got really awesome downloads and... I just had, I have to share them with you guys. And I know like I'm probably going to be adding on to it in the future with new information, but if I can just give you guys like as much as I can at once, that way you can just like take it and go and just do massive amounts of healing and truly shift your life like tremendously. That is like my intention and my goal because, you know, it really just is my intention to help you heal and teach you how to heal yourself. And so, yeah, I really want to take all of you who are experiencing poverty and being broke all the time and really shifting you on on track for financial freedom, if not into that frequency and that consciousness, so that you are experiencing financial abundance and financial ease and your life is much easier. And just, I have so so much information for you guys. So Yeah, again, super sorry about that. Just keep an eye on it. I will update you guys once we get closer to that date. Um, I'm definitely thinking on the last week of December. That way you guys can just go crazy before the new year and also into the new year in January. And so, yeah, it's going to be epic. It's going to be so epic. And I cannot wait to hear your stories. I really cannot wait because it's going to freaking change your life. So I am so excited. 
Um, okay. And then last but not least, I have my yoga memberships going live on December 1st. So literally, what is that next Friday? Oh my God, you guys. Ah, I'm so excited. So, um, I have two yoga memberships. One is four classes a month. And I also do a channeled message of the month as well. That way you can do your yoga practice with the intention of the kind of energies that are going on. And then you have more of a direction on what you need to focus on, release, integrate, call in, right? So yeah, that is the four month class. Um, Sorry, not four month. Oh my gosh. Four classes a month. And it gets the channeled message every month. And so that membership price is $88. And then I have the unlimited yoga membership that comes with as many yoga classes as your heart and soul desires. I have a pre-recorded sound bath that I do monthly. And also I decided for the yoga, the unlimited membership, I'm just going to leave all of the videos there. That way you guys can just like peruse um, that membership platform. And then you can just like pick whatever video that you want to practice for whatever day that you're feeling called to. And you can just repeat them if you want to as well. But the unlimited yoga membership comes with unlimited classes every month. So there's going to be like at least 16 classes, (laughs) like at least. And then you get your channeled message of the month as well. And you get the 30 minute recorded sound bath. And so for the month of December, I did, what was it? I specifically focused on raising the vibrational frequency of the energy body. And once you can raise the vibrational frequency of the energy body and integrate it with the physical body, oh my gosh, like talk about manifesting your dream life. And especially if you're a star seed and you're a light worker and you're wanting to do, um, you want to take things to the next level in your life. Like with your career and everything else, like I'm telling you, oh my gosh, you guys are going to love it. You're going to love it so much. The unlimited, the, oh my gosh, the unlimited membership is $222 a month. So not too crazy. Um, it's definitely a fair price for all of the content that you're getting, all of the energy healing that you're doing. And so, yeah, it's totally worth it. Also, the way the memberships work is you can cancel whenever you want. There's no crazy contract kind of thing. Um, None of that. I I believe that once you sign up, if you're not happy with it, like after 24 hours, I can issue you like a full refund, full refund, no charge, like no issues. Uh, but after the 24 hour window, you will have to keep it for a month. And then um, also you can choose to cancel it like at any time, like it should just give you like that option if you're like, okay, like, you know, I'm not digging this anymore. Um if you go past that 24 hour window, there won't be like a full refund, but you will be able to cancel it and then you won't get charged anymore. So I don't have any kind of weird contracts or like weird credits or anything like that. Like just know that you have total free will to cancel, um, whenever. And so, yeah, just know that if it's before the 24 hour window, you do get a full refund. If it's not, if it's past that, then you don't, you just have to cancel it right then and there. Um, And then I think it just lets you access the videos for the remaining monthly cycle. And so, yeah, anyways, I wanted to cover that before we get into our episode today. Um, All of this information can be found below in the show notes and as well on my website, again, at www.zenwithgrayson.com. And then last but not least, my final update before we get into the episode is I will be playing a live sound bath at Heightened Vitality in Draper, Utah every month. So excited. We will be, so basically I will bring all of my sound bowls and my tongue drum into this room where there are machines that are emitting certain quantum codes and healing frequencies. And it literally helps you purge out so much energy and just really helps you unwind and take you to the next level as well in different ways. And so in combination with those machines and my sound bath and my psychic abilities, it is going to be one incredible experience every month. Um, depending on how busy it is, the first couple of months that we try it, we might turn it into bi-monthly because there's only 12 chairs um, in the room. So it is kind of limited. But just know that you can reserve your spot online at High and Vitality, like through their website and Draper. Um, or you can reach out to me, feel free to message me on Instagram, um, through my website, through my email, uh, send me a text, call me, leave me a voicemail if I don't answer. Um, and then yeah, we can get you all set up for that. So yeah, let's get into the episode. 
Okay, first things first is I really want to throw this out there before I start talking about the particular topic that we're going to discuss today. I want to say this is a trigger warning, okay? So just know I'm saying this is a trigger warning because depending on where your consciousness is at is going to reflect on how you feel about this information, okay? So just know that it's not an egoical thing. We're not spiritual bypassing. Like, I really, really wanted to utilize my dark masculine psychic ability, which is this ability and energy to be able to witness and discuss very gory, traumatic uh, things from a very, very higher consciousness perspective, okay? And so depending on where your consciousness is at, okay? And I'm going to give you an example on what I'm talking about so that you can fully uh, grasp what I'm saying. But um, just know that, listen to your body. I want you to pause this episode and close your eyes and ask your body, are you ready to hear and handle this information at this time. If you feel your body contract, listen to that. It is telling you, no, it's not ready yet. There's still some more lessons and other stuff that you need to learn and integrate before you can basically integrate this podcast, okay? Because this is really just, we're taking this high, okay? This is not a game. This is not uh, something to play around with. Like, this is very, very... um, it's very high in perspective. Okay. And right now in 2023, there's not a lot of people on the planet who think this way, not yet at least. And I really just want to plant some seeds today. I really want to plant some seeds and really share my unique perspective on traumatic events and lifetimes and stuff. And really just give you guys a lot of answers that I feel like we naturally want to look for. Okay. And I really want to share my personal experience of, um, my first past life regression and how this relates to what we're discussing today. But we're going to talk about basically the theme of today's conversation is how to witness energies, information, and just real life stuff in the physical and the non-physical it's like at this very neutral, observing, detached, mature, wise energy, okay? And I'm not sure. I think I think you have to, yeah. I'm like tuning in. I feel like you have to go through certain incarnations in order to like develop that gift to be able to do that, like to be fully present in a traumatic situation instead of like emotionally unraveling. To give you guys an example, I used to work at this diner um, in Sandy, Utah. And the second day that I started this diner, this guy I was working with just totally collapsed like in front of me and like a bunch of other people. Like he had a full on. um... Anyways, he like basically collapsed to the floor and There were girls and other people just around who were just freaking out, emotionally unraveling, like totally not present, totally not conscious of like what was going on. Like they could not be present with the traumatic situation that was going on. Okay. And because I have this dark masculine gift, and this is not limited to just me, like there are many souls who have this gift. Okay. And I'm sure this might spark a, like a, like a, oh, I know somebody like that. Or, oh, this is totally me kind of feeling. But basically, I and this other guy, we were the only ones who just basically put that fear, the other emotions that came up that were arising in our bodies, we literally pushed it to the side so that we just went like straight into like present, like, I literally was like calling the police. Like I was on the phone with them. They got to the diner within like two minutes and I was like remaining calm the whole time. I wasn't freaking out. Like I was just speaking very calmly, very like sternly, like direct and just like being aware and present of the entire situation that was going on. 
And so, um, anyways, after that went down, it was, like, after he got picked up by the ambulance and, like, went to the hospital and, like, the situation cleared up, like, the energy resolved, it was, like, I then gave myself the permission to go, okay, I need to, like, feel, like, what came up, like, right when that situation went down, right? And so then I, like, gave myself permission to feel the fear and, like, the horror and everything else that I was experiencing emotionally. And so, right, like, I went from, I started in dark masculine, which is, like, very, like, leadership, very present with gory, traumatic stuff. And then I shifted into my feminine and, like, allowed myself to feel those emotions and what was going on on a different level, right? So I literally went from, like, many different levels back and forth to be able to handle that situation, if that makes sense, okay? And a very, like, mature, wise, you know like leader kind of manner. Okay. So now I want to share another story, which, so I, when I did my first past life regression, first of all, I didn't like, I like heard of past lives and stuff and like, I believed in them, but it was like, I just didn't care. Like there, I was like, what's the purpose of me even like learning about this? Like, you know, why, why should I care? Because at the time, like, before I got deep into them, I was just like, okay, like, whatever. Like, it was like hearing about, like, karma and other stuff. I'm like, okay, like, I know it exists, but, like, why do I care kind of thing. And so then, anyways, I did my first past life regression, and it, like, just made so much sense. It gave me so many answers, like, about my life and this lifetime and everything. And uh, basically, I was in the Holocaust, and... um. I'm not going to go into details, but it was a very traumatic lifetime. And um, because I went through that lifetime, it allowed me to live in this lifetime and experience my super sensitive psychic abilities. Like I can feel energies like very clearly, very easily in the physical and the non-physical. Like literally nobody can lie to me. Like I will know if someone's lying or not. Like, I love having my gift. Like, so that's the blessing. And, like, you know, the wound and the trauma is, like, being so sensitive. Because <laughs> I'm, like, it's, like, okay, cool. Like, I found the gratitude in it, you know? And so, anyways. And so when that past life was first revealed to me, I was feeling, like, all of these heavy, dense emotions in my body. Like, it felt like my body was going to die, basically, when all of those heavy emotions came up. I was, like, what the hell is this? Like, oh, my God. I was like, okay, past lifetimes are real, and I'm feeling a lot of heavy energy, like, a lot of heavy emotions, like, this is kind of crazy, like, oh my gosh, like, I was, like, slumped for, like, two days, like, it was, like, if you could go past depression and, like, past numbness, that's, like, what it was, like, can you even imagine that sensation? It's, like, what is that? (laughs) Like, oh my god, like, I don't even know how to describe that, but anyways... And so, uh, my ex-husband who I was married to at the time when I was going through that in my spiritual journey, the very beginning of my journey, um, he was married to me in that lifetime and he actually helped me escape from Auschwitz. And I had dreams of this house that I hid in in the woods. Like I could literally smell the house. It smelled like urine. It was so crazy. And I remember seeing, um, like these, not cobblestones, but like, what do you call those? like, stones that you see in people's houses, like, those people's rich houses who have, like, the stones leading up to it, you know? Like, I saw those. And then there was, like, a sign in, like, pink letters, and it said Adolf um, in his last name. Like, I don't want to, like, say it out loud because I'm, like, I don't want to connect with that energy, you know? But anyways. And so, yeah, when all of that information was coming up to me, I was feeling, like, all that dense, heavy emotional energy and like all this anger and this rage. And like, I was like, Oh my gosh, like, what is like, what do I do? How do I heal this? How do I fix this? Right. And the medium that I was working with at the time, she told me, she said, the only way to get rid of this is if you forgive. And I said, what? Like forgive. Okay. And so like my mind just like could not grasp like and I just couldn't grasp it in the moment because I was so desperate to get out of, like, that uncomfortable, like, heavy feeling emotional energy that I was like, I'm willing to say whatever to get out of that, you know? And so um, it was like I didn't want to give myself the permission to feel all that stuff. Like, I just wanted to run away from it, basically. And so when she told me that, she was like, um, 
I need you to visualize the men who did this to you in their highest self form and you and your highest self form communicate to their higher self and say, I'm sorry, please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. It's called a Honoponopono prayer. It's very popular, um, Hawaiian practice. And anyways, and so I just like started saying it. I was just like following her along and she was like, good, good, good. The energy's clearing. And, um, needless to say, I had lots of layers to heal around that lifetime because first of all, I incarnated with, I'm pretty sure it was like 50% of it into this lifetime because had I not taken half of it with me into this life, like I wouldn't have made it in that lifetime. So like basically I went to source and I asked source, you know, if I could split it and yeah, I made a deal with source. And so anyways, super deep stuff, guys, I'm telling you, this is next level shit. Okay. (laughs) And so, um, yeah, I had lots of layers to heal. Like I was very sensitive to like certain bad frequencies. I'm just not even going to get into it, but uh, I'm pretty sure you guys know where I'm going with this and the kind of lifetime that I experienced. Like, you know, I saw metaphorical images of like walking past dead bodies in a ditch and um, where they burn the bodies like alive and dead in Auschwitz. It was crazy, y'all. It was so crazy. And so anyway, so after I was like saying this forgiveness prayer, she was like, okay, good. The energy's clearing. So then my next question, maybe because I'm a Sagittarius and I just like love to ask people questions about everything and like get to the deepest of the deep about it. Like, (laughs) I just love it so much. But I was asking her and I said, why? I said, why did I go through that? What the fuck was the purpose of going through that lifetime? Like, why? And she said, uh, what did she say? She said that I chose to go through it, but she didn't know why. I know why now because, like, I've tapped into my own Akashic records and stuff. And this is, like, we're going to go deep, guys. Just prepare yourselves, okay? (laughs) I hope I still have you. And so, anyway, she's like, you chose this. Like, you chose to go through that. And I was like, why the fuck would I go? Like, why would I choose that, right? Like, who chooses to go through something so traumatic and so, like, horrible, you know? And... She didn't have any answers for me at the time. And I'm like trying to remember what she said. This was like back in like 2021, I think. Yeah, I think it was 2021. So just uh, just two years ago, literally two years ago, almost three years ago. And yeah, like I can't remember what she said, but she wouldn't like, she didn't give me the answers that I needed today kind of thing, you know? And so, um... She was like, if you don't forgive, like, just know that you're going to hold on to this energy and it's going to keep causing you problems. And so I literally always had upper back shoulder pains, like, my whole life. Like, I used to remember, like, so many adults, like, telling me, oh, you shouldn't have that kind of pain. You're so young. Like, well, I do. I have it. So, you know, just because I'm young doesn't mean I don't have it kind of thing. Like, screw. Screw you. (laughs) Like, you don't know my body, bitch. And so anyway... Um, so yeah. And then she, when she was doing the past life regression, she goes, you're holding this past lifetime in your upper back and your bladder. And I'm going to be very, very vulnerable with you guys. My whole entire life up until I was like dealing with this past life regression stuff, I had issues with my bladder, like, like so bad. And it was because in that lifetime I could not get up and go use the bathroom. I was, yeah, I just, I couldn't go to the bathroom. So, um, yeah, I'm not even going to go into detail because it's very disturbing and I don't want to disturb you guys. So if I haven't disturbed you too much already. And so anyway, um, I had tons of energy sitting on my physical organ in this lifetime. Like I had a lot of non-physical energy sitting on my bladder. And I remember going to this, um, this urologist, like this bladder doctor when I was in high school, because I was like, oh my God, like I'm so tired of having bladder issues. Like, this is so embarrassing. Like, uh, I like, I felt so alone because I felt like nobody else dealt with it, but me. And, um, I remember like going there, I think I was like 17, like I was super young and, um, 
the, like, you know how, like, when you go to the doctor, you have to, like, fill out a form, and then they, like, ask why you're there? Well, I told them, like, why I was there, and I literally was, like, sitting in the doctor's office, and there were, like, two nurses, like, two girls outside in the hallway, and I literally heard them, like, laughing about me. They were, like, ha, 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 she has issues, like, peeing herself, blah, 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 and I was just, like, oh, my God, like, y'all are horrible. Like, y'all literally are gonna get yours. Like, that's just all I was thinking about, like, And then I remember telling my grandfather, who actually originally recommended that doctor in the first place, and you know his response was to me, he was like, can you just set your ego aside for a second and set your pride to the side for a second? And I was just like, are you serious right now? How do you say that to a teenage girl who is going through a super embarrassing issue that they have no idea how to fix, who I'm sure other millions of people struggle with, who have no freaking idea how to fix it? Like... And it was all because of past life trauma. Like, I literally took in 50% of that trauma into this lifetime. So it really affected me deeply. And I was so embarrassed, like, dealing with that issue. Like, you know, and I'm, I can be very vulnerable and talk about that now because, you know, I'm 27, almost 27. And I'm super grown. I don't have that energy in my body anymore. So now my body functions like a normal person, finally, right? Like, but, like, I just remember, like how awful it was like dealing with that like literally like my entire life and nobody understanding me and like people laughing at me and I was just like wow like wow this is horrible like why is this happening to me you know and so anyways that past life regression uh, brought me so many answers to why my physical body was responding that way and uh what else what else what else oh yeah so here's the thing okay we're going to take it we're going to take it to the next level in consciousness. Are you ready? Are you ready? So because I was the victim in that previous lifetime, it's because I played the other role in a previous lifetime. So when we go through lifetimes as Okay. Let me just give you an example. Okay, we're going to get super vulnerable again. Okay. When I was six years old, I was sexually molested by my uncle on my mom's side of the family. I don't, I barely have like memories of it happening, but like I remember being at his house, seeing his pool. I don't remember leaving his house. I remember like being at the front door and that like that's it because my memories like got blocked to protect me. Like it was like a safety mechanism basically. And so this is what happens when we get sexually abused in childhood. Like we literally just block everything out and we can like barely remember it or barely remember like that happening to us at all and so it can be really intense um and that also having that uh wound in childhood you can actually meet certain karmic partners who have that same wound and you actually trauma bond over that and then ah it's like a whole deep relationship which don't even get me started (laughs) because it's like it's just crazy it's just so crazy like you know who we meet and why we meet them and so anyways um So, with that being said, I was the victim. I played the victim role in this lifetime, right? Going through that scenario. And my uncle was the abuser. Okay? Same question. I said, why did I choose to go through that? Because I just got access to that memory back in February of this year. Like, I literally, like, did not even know that happened to me until I did deeper inner child work this, like, at the beginning of this year. It was so crazy. Oh, my God. It was nuts. And... Yeah, that's like a whole, I'm, I'm going to have to do a whole podcast on that, honestly, because I know that I'm supposed to share that wound as medicine with millions of people. Like I felt called to do that. So yeah, I think I'm going to do that um, on my next episode, maybe. I don't know. You, you guys can message me and tell me what you think. But anywho, so I played the victim in this, in this lifetime and he was the abuser in this lifetime. And I asked the question, why? And I got... Because I needed to clear old karmic energy. I said, what, what does that mean? What do you mean by that? And so basically I got channeled information that before I was molested in this lifetime, in a previous lifetime, not like my most recent one, of course, but like a previous lifetime, I was the abuser and he was the victim in that lifetime, right? So because I played that role, I had to like neutralize that energy and like close that cycle by coming into this lifetime and clearing it as the victim and he was the abuser. Okay. 
And of course, I didn't get access to that information at that level of consciousness until I did the inner work, until I did the healing. Because when you are just accessing that wound and you're just accessing those memories and you're processing all those emotions and like, you know, you're just moving through that like healing work, you're really not in the best place to access a higher level of consciousness and like asking the whys and like, please make it make sense. Like, I just don't understand because the majority of people are just not ready to handle that information yet. Okay. And so that brings me back to that dark masculine energy, which I literally embody that. And so naturally, because I embody that, I'm like, well, I want answers. I want to know why I went through this. I want to know why I was the victim. I want to know why I chose to be the abuser. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I just wanted more answers. And I sure enough got them because I was ready for them. And I will say to you, I will be so honest with you guys that back in February, (laughs) I was not ready to listen to that. I was not ready to listen to information that said you chose this because you were clearing old karmic energy. I wasn't ready to listen to that because I needed to go through the inner work. I needed to heal those wounds. I needed to reprogram my energy. I needed to clear my body memory, right? Like I do a lot of energy healing. Okay. A lot of subconscious healing, a lot of inner child healing. There's a lot of healing, lots of non-physical healing that came with that before I was in a place of getting higher answers and the why. Okay. And so if you're still here, you're still listening to this podcast, congratulations, like you're a freaking badass, like you're incredible, um, because this is really high information, okay? And the majority of the people right now on the planet cannot tolerate this level of consciousness yet. It's coming, um, but as of right now, they're just not there yet. And so I want to plant seeds and let you know That whenever you are dabbling in your own journey, whether it's past life regressions or trauma healing from this lifetime or whatever it is, I want you to know that as hard as it is to even like remember and heal from those wounds and like having to like quote unquote relive it in a sense, but you're not really reliving it, you know what I mean? And so before you lash out and get emotionally defensive and reactive and unravel, just take some deep breaths and just separate yourself from very high, high consciousness downloads. Okay. Because, because they're going to trigger you. They're going to trigger those wounds that are still in you that need to be healed. Okay. And when you feel like it's not totally bothering you anymore as much as it used to and you're like okay I kind of want to go a little bit deeper on the why then definitely ask you can totally ask your own spirit guides your higher self like they will tell you I'm telling you the second that I ask oh y'all okay this is crazy this is gonna give you chills goosebumps when I was doing inner child healing in February I was reading this um this paragraph about connecting with your inner child And how the sentence said, you know, it may feel unsafe to connect to your inner child. And the second I said out loud and in my mind, why would it feel unsafe is when that memory got unblocked. I got a visual of my uncle through my third eye. My body just went into straight panic mode. I started like having shortness of breath. Like it was like I just induced this full on panic attack. Like I literally was embodying that energy for who, like what, 20 years, 20 years, just unconsciously embodying that energy. And so I was like running around my room. I was on the phone with my ex-husband. I was like, I was like, oh my God, I'm freaking out. I don't know why I'm freaking out. Like, ah, and he was like, just breathe, just breathe. <laughs> He's like, you're fine. Just breathe, just breathe. And he like really was like holding space for me. Like, I'm so grateful that he was there to be a pillar because I needed that really bad. And yeah, it was just so intense. And, you know, I just, at the time, I was not ready for the why. I was not ready to listen to um, the deeper answers because I still, like, felt that energy in my energy, if that makes sense. Like, it felt so traumatizing. I didn't even want to talk about it. Like, I was like, I was like, I went first, like, into denial. I was like, no, 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 no. There's no way that happened to me. Like, no, because I don't remember it. I'm like, how can I, how can that have happened to me if I don't remember it, right? But, Yeah, you guys, it was crazy. It was so nuts. And so anyways, um, I just want to plant some more seeds. (laughs) 
And I want to say this, any kind of information you personally get access to, whether it's inside of you, like through your own Akashic records, your higher self, your guides, your healed ancestors, loved ones that have passed away, um, or through your dreams, through your dreamscapes, right? Or outside of you, okay? So when we see really traumatic stuff outside of us, okay, I'm not going to give any particular examples at this time, but there will be stuff that comes to the light, all that is hidden will be revealed, and a lot of that stuff is going to be very intense and traumatic, and <sighs> yeah, this planet is on on the path of healing lots of deep traumas, and so me having done the majority of this work at an individual level, and I know how it's going to reflect on a collective level, all I'm going to say is this, Okay. Try to keep this in mind. And this is part of my dark masculine psychic ability. Okay. Step one is give yourself permission to feel everything. Your emotions, your judgments, your reactions, just everything. Give yourself full permission to just let it out. Cry, you know, release anger healthily through the wall. Okay. Like by putting your palms on the wall and then like, have y'all ever seen that where you like kind of stand like not at a 90 degree angle, but like almost like at a 45 degree angle and then you just like put your hands on the wall and then you just like set the intention to release your anger or go to the gym. That's a good way. Um, my spirit guides guided me to do that, like to release my anger and my sadness through the gym. Um, what else? Uh, where was I going with this? Oh yeah. Yeah. So anything that triggers you, that is very traumatic information, um, Give yourself full permission to feel it to the fullest. Don't judge yourself. Just, you know, write a burn letter if you need to. Just scream if you need to. Like, however it is that you need to process that is just you need to process it. Process it. Integrate it. Right. And then here is step two. Okay. Step two is now that you have felt the emotional decoys go off. Those emotional decoys are covering wounds within your energy, okay, to be healed. Those emotions that you're experiencing from triggering information outside of you, those emotions are going, hey, there's an energetic wound here that needs attention, and I'm feeling anger, like this anger is covering this energetic wound, this sadness is covering this energetic wound, this grief is covering this energetic wound, this uh, fear, this horror is covering an energetic wound. Okay. There's something here that needs to be healed in my energy. Then that's when you go to step two and you can ask yourself or go seek out an energy healer, whatever it is that you feel called to do and say, okay, now that I felt this emotion, you know, I really recommend journaling it. So you like, you keep a documentation, like you keep track of like what was going on, um, in your life. And so you can like watch your life play out. Like through a journal. So it's so cool. It's so fascinating to see your progress and your growth. But anyways, step two is what is here for me that needs to be brought to my awareness that needs to be brought conscious, right? So, Ooh, yeah, I'm not feeling called to share that one. That one's too intense right now. I'll have to share that, um, probably in 2020, 2025. So, okay, let's take it a little bit lighter. <laughs> um, okay. That's a good one I can use. Mm. Okay, I'm just going to go back to my Auschwitz past lifetime. Okay, for example, it's like going out in the world, you're in Germany, you're brand new, spiritual, brand new to your spiritual awakening, or maybe like you're not there yet, whatever, and you go visit Auschwitz, and oh my god, you get major triggered, you're feeling heavy energy, you're like, get me out of here, you start feeling anxious, like right? Like those emotions are triggering. They're going, Hey, they're setting off alarms. They're like, Hey, Grayson, there's something here that you need to heal. Okay. Like there's something here for you. Have any of you ever experienced that? Like you go somewhere and you're just like getting really unsettling energy and you're just like, Oh my God. Um, I don't know what it is about this place, but I need to get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Okay. There's something there for you. Okay. Let me just actually take this to a lighter example. <laughs> Sorry, we're going all over the place. For example, I was driving at nighttime with my mom in the mountains in Utah. Okay. I think we were in Draper, I want to say. 
I'm not sure where we were. I and mean, I think it was Draper. Anyways, we were going up this mountain and I had to go up this mountain to go to this fancy restaurant that I was like literally dying to eat at because I just love luxury. I love fine dining. I love comfort, you know, in the highest vibrational way. I don't like low vibrational luxury experiences because there's definitely both. Um, personally, I believe there are a lot of low vibrational, um, energies and entanglement with designer stuff, which is why I don't wear designer things. Um, that's a whole other conversation we can get into in another episode. But anyways, I like high vibrational luxury experiences and I always know if a place is high vibrational and for me and if it's not. And so anyways, so we were like driving up this mountain and I started to feel like I was suffocating and I was like, Oh my God, like, I can't drive any farther. Like, I feel like I'm going to freaking die. Like, I felt like I was freaking out. Like, it felt like my body was, like, about to shut down. Like, it didn't have any oxygen. It was so weird. And my mom just goes, uh, what did she say? I think she was like, you have a you have a, a persecution, lifetime energy that is surfacing right now in your throat chakra. I said, oh, my God. Like, I've got to go home and, like, channel that and see if it's there. Sure enough, it was. And I had to clear this lifetime of... I think I was living in Massachusetts and I was like, I was, um, labeled a witch, but I was like a healer, right? Because, um, the churches hated healers. Like they hated anyone that went against their agendas, right? Like if you think about it, like to the modern day, like what do you, what do people call each other when they don't support their toxic agendas, right? Like they call you a conspiracy theorist or whatever it is. (laughs) Like, it's so funny. I'm like, okay, so you're going to psychologically like try to be abusive towards me because I'm not falling into your toxic manipulative tactics, you narcissistic toxic bitch. Bye. And so anyways, um, so yeah, I went, I went home and I healed that energy out of my throat chakra. And so I gave it a couple days to fully integrate. I always give myself about 48 hours to allow the energy healing to reflect into the physical. And so Then when we drove there again, I didn't feel the suffocation energy. I did feel the change in elevation, but I didn't feel that suffocation energy. And so I was like, oh my God, yay, like I did it. And, oh, sorry. Oh, sleepy. But, um, yeah, I'm still sensitive to, like, elevation shifts. It's because, um... I don't think that's ever going to go away because I think that's part of my psychic abilities. Like it's part of me being sensitive to energies. So it's like, I'm sensitive to the shifts in altitude, um, which is part of the reason why I don't want to get on an airplane right now because I'm like, um, absolutely not. Like I don't want to go through that experience right now. So yeah. Anyways, I like, I made a goal to myself. I made a promise to myself that the next plane that I get on, I will be flying private so that I can conquer that fear because I need to get over that fear so that I can travel to really important places on the planet. And so anyway, um, yeah, that's just like a small example of how energies inside of us can affect us, you know? So yeah, step two is addressing those energetic wounds. Okay. Step three is then when you're ready, after the processing, after the integration, after the healing and the releasing. Step three is when you can ask why. That is when you're ready to know more and you're more open and receptive for the higher answers that you're looking for. And I feel like that's what, you know, people really want is answers. Like everyone's so exhausted, so tired of being lied to, manipulated, gaslit, Like, everyone's just so tired of it, you know? And we're going to hit a threshold. We're going to hit a threshold very soon um, where everyone is just like, you know what? Screw this. Screw this. Um, We're just going to do our own thing. Fuck fuck the rest of (laughs) y'all. Like, I'm so excited to watch that go down. I'm just so excited. But anyways, um, yeah, this planet is going to look very different in the next five years. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait for everyone, like who comes and listens to this podcast like five years from now or even 10 years from now or even, I don't even know, into the future. And they're just like, dang, she was like talking about this back in 2023. Like, that's badass. <laughs> like, I just can't wait for that. Um, Because I'm like that with like certain uh, healers and teachers that I find across like social media and the internet. I'm just like, oh my God, they published this content back in like 2018. Like, what the heck? You know, it's like five years ago. But it's, like, so relevant to your, like, now time. It's, like, so relevant to your journey today. Anyways, so wild how that works. But, um, 
yeah, I know this content one day, whenever you're listening to it, it's going to be for you at this time. And so, yeah. So yeah, I'm just planting all those seeds because knowing the why, once you can make it to step three, because everyone's going to get to step three at some point, once you can make it there and actually understand things at a higher level, it really helps bring more compassion, more empathy, more unconditional love, like more of that unity consciousness, that freedom, that happiness, like just higher states of being, which is literally like just pure inner peace and happiness and all the good things, right? Like, you know, when you're on vacation and you're just in total joy, like for me personally, when I go on vacation and I go jet skiing, like over gorgeous blue water, and I just literally feel pure bliss and pure joy. Like I'm just, I'm just not here. Like I'm literally not in the matrix. I'm just like, just purely existing and just pure happiness. It's like the best feeling ever. And so when we can understand why, the why behind everything that goes on, no matter how traumatic, no matter how small, like everything in between, when you can literally handle that, when you can handle the why and the answers, oh my God, imagine the progress of our species. Imagine the evolution of our consciousness on this planet. Like, oh my God just so incredible, like gives me chills, you know? And personally for my journey, it has taken me, it's taken me, I want to say like, I wouldn't say it took me two years, but it took me a little over a, a full year. Okay. A little over a year to be able to handle fully and understand the whys. Okay. And just know that every time you get triggered by something, just talk to yourself, be there for yourself show up for yourself and say, okay, Grayson, we're really bothered by something right now. And I don't know what it is, but we're just going to give ourselves permission to feel this discomfort because it's normal. Like we need to get comfortable feeling uncomfortable in a healthy way. Okay. Right. Like we need to give ourselves permission to feel the discomfort, that anxiety, that fear, the grief, the sadness. And then you can go into, okay, doing the energy healing around it. Right healing yourself, pulling that energy wound out of you, pulling out all the layers out of you and anything else that might be there. And then going, okay, why? Now I'm ready for the why. All right. And that is just like literally the perfect skeleton structure that I have used that has helped me progress so, so rapidly and so, so quickly to where I can understand. I can literally go super high in consciousness, like all the way to source level, like, um, primary life force energy of just like oneness and just really blowing your mind there. (laughs) Or I can drop it in different, you know, layers of consciousness. Like I can really take it down a notch and really help integrate the more of the experiences and understanding of everything. Okay. It's like, it's like when you go into debt in the 3d and the third dimension and you're just like, you're in credit card debt and you're just like, oh my gosh, you're like talking to yourself and telling yourself like, how's it, how are you going to pay off this credit card? Like you can't do it. Like it's too hard. You're struggling. And then you go into like fourth dimensional consciousness around debt. And it's like, you like take accountability for your uh, spending habits and you're taking financial responsibility. You're starting to, you're starting to learn how to budget. You're starting to become more aware, more conscious of what's going in and out of your bank account. And then you're like, well, you know, I kind of did this to myself. Can't really blame anybody but myself. Like no one really did this to me, but I created this kind of thing. It's like you start taking responsibility and then you start shifting into that fifth dimensional consciousness, which is that creator role. Like you're like, okay, I know I created this. Um, Now I have a healthy relationship with money and I'm actually going to use debt to my advantage. I'm going to use debt to grow my wealth so that I can experience financial freedom. It's like, it just depends on your consciousness and how you literally perceive life. So through the different, yeah, the different themes of consciousness is how you're going to perceive your life. Somebody who is in a third dimensional, maybe even fourth dimensional, I don't know. I mean, when I was in fourth dimensional consciousness, I could handle the whys, but I wouldn't say everyone is able to. Um, It's because I have that dark masculine energy, psychic ability, right? Like I can literally... 
like just witness life as it is, but just like present without emotionally unraveling. Like it's so powerful, guys. Like I'm just, I'm obsessed. I love my psychic gifts. (laughs) I love them so much. But yeah, it's like, it's deep. It's so deep. But anyways, I really just wanted to talk about that today because it's so important that we don't allow things, the outside world to consume us and really shifting. It's like shifting out of that ego mentality of like everything happens to me, like I'm a victim and shifting and like making the conscious choice to say out loud, okay, I am choosing to shift out of this limiting belief. I'm choosing to shift out of this perspective and shift into one where I know that I'm a creator. I know that I created all of this and I'm going to take responsibility for all of it. (laughs) Ha ha. That's, that's your challenge. That's my challenge for you. (laughs) It probably took me like two years to get to that point, but, um, yeah, hopefully it won't take you guys that long. But anyways, (sighs) I feel like this was a really good in-depth thorough conversation and I really hope it touches you guys and helps take you guys to the next level and healing yourselves and yeah taking you to your next levels to live your best lives because that is like my goal that is like what I want for all of you so yeah when we get in love with our traumas attached to our traumas and we refuse to let go and we choose to stay in victim mentality and we stay stagnant and play it safe guess what your life is going to suck. You're not going to live your dream life living in that kind of consciousness. Okay. And I'm just going to be straight up blunt and direct about that. Okay. Your desired life that you so want so bad, that's out of your comfort zone. That is out of survival self. That is into authentic self. So if you guys need help and assistance with that kind of healing, feel free to reach out to me book a session online through my website. We can totally do an online session. If you're out of the United States, Um, and if not, you can come see me in Riverton, Utah. I have my own healing room and I can help you get there. So up to you guys. Um, but I'm going to cut this conversation here, call it good because this was really, really good. And I really want this to sink in, totally come back and listen to this. Like, you know, I would recommend listening to this episode about two times because this is really high, high consciousness information. And so And this is basically it. This is about as high as it goes. And so if you can handle that, congratulations. You have mastered this reality. So, um, yeah, I love you guys so much. Be sure to check out all of those courses and programs on my website. My new yoga membership is launching December 1st again. Like I said, you can access all those links and my link tree on Instagram as well. And I will be posting all of the links in the show notes below. Um, And thank you so much, guys, for being here. And I hope you all have a a wonderful rest of your Sunday, a wonderful rest of your week. We've got more mind consciousness expanding topics for Sagittarius season. So Sag, and I love to expand your consciousness. And so we are going to be doing that the next couple of episodes. So get ready, get your journals out and take some deep breaths, do some yoga, go on a walk, go to the gym, do some self-care, spoil yourself because you all freaking deserve it. Okay. Love you guys. Have an amazing rest of your week.